Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I uh, trust that you're well. I hope that you're well and staying safe and healthy out there. And I wanted to do a follow-up video to my recent video about the announcement or pre-announcement, if you will, of Luminar AI. Uh, and yes, this time I did wear the Pink Floyd t-shirt for those of you that kind of are in on that a uh, little bit of a uh, joke. So there's there's a lot to talk about. There's been a lot of interaction, lots of comments. And this I thought would be, um, I would, I'm gonna dive into some of the features now, to be clear, as I said in that previous video, I don't have the software, so I can't give you a demo. As soon as I do, I will. Trust me, uh, there's nothing I like more than making videos about this stuff because it's so fun. I'm going to dive in and, and do some more examination of things that are on the public website and share some thoughts and some feedback and that sort of thing. The first thing I wanted to say is, you know, there's a lot of interaction with my video. As you can see here, as of the making of this video, it's well over 500 comments. Um, I'm trying. I'm, I, I'm, I'm the kind of YouTuber that I think of this as a community, like we're all friends, we have common goals, which are let's go edit photos, have fun doing it, get creative, things like that. And um, I, I like to interact with, with the community. So I have not answered every comment. I'm going to try to. Um, it's just not going to be something that I'm going to get done in a few days or even maybe a few weeks. I don't know. But I keep coming back and trying to answer them and they keep piling up. So there are comments that are you know really positive and obviously there are comments that are negative and I want to talk about that as well. And it's totally fine. Regardless of your opinion, I think this is a community. I think we're all friends, as I said, uh, and I, I want to try to address those to the extent that I can. So as you know, the pre-order period is going on. You can get it at the link down below and that is an affiliate link, as I've said in a previous video. I make a small referral commission for sending you their way if you purchase. It doesn't cost you anything extra and it gives me, um, it's basically a free way to support folks like myself that provide content. And trust me, I'm going to make a whole lot of videos about this. I'm going to talk about that as well. Um, you'll get it late this holiday season. There is an insiders community. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop over there and show you what this insiders community looks like. Okay, here we are in the insiders community. And you can see on the left hand side, there's different tabs that you can click on. And basically, they're encouraging everyone to put a little intro uh, bio so you can kind of come through and I'm going through and I'm clicking these uh, cheers to basically welcome people to the group so I've been doing that there's a lot of different things you can do in here um, there is a discovery so you can kind of see if you click on here there's some welcome messages from some of the executives and the moderators uh, that work for Skyloom to be clear I don't work for Skyloom um, but uh, there's different things like that you can click on these you can go in there there's different topics which you can also get to over here. Now to be clear, there's not a ton of content here just yet. This community is built for the insiders, but they've only revealed what's on the public website so far. The great thing about this insiders community is as new things are announced or made available, you're going to see them here first. They're going to have events. They're going to have a uh, insider kind of webinar going on. There's different groups you can join. Uh, there's FAQs. Um, so that'll take you to the Skyloom website, right, where you can do that. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you is over here on the discovery tab, you can kind of go in and they're showing you uh, a first look at Iris AI. So this is a an eye enhancement, specifically the, the Iris itself. So if you look at this model's um, eyes, you can see them there. And then here they are, are after. Now it's going to be crisper, but you also notice that the color has changed. There it's more of a brown and here it's more of a blue. Here's another example. And I'm just kind of going quick through this because I don't have the tool. I can't tell you everything that it's doing. But here you can see her eyes very much go with the color of her hair, which, which obviously looks great. Um, but here they've changed it so the color of the eyes actually go more with a little bit of the background uh, and the color of her, her shirt or dress. So there's different things like that that you're going to get previews to, which I think is really cool. Another benefit of being a pre-order person or pre-order customer, I should say, for Luminar AI. And of course, remember, you have a 30-day money-back guarantee. That starts at the ship date. So if you get it and you have it for 30 days and don't like it, get a refund. Um, I wanted to touch real quickly on what Luminar AI is, despite having this in my previous video. Still lots of questions about it. It is an entirely new product. It is not Luminar 5. It's got a new engine underneath it, and they're really focusing on simplifying the photo editing process, helping people create better photos in less time. So it is focused on the results, not the 
the process is. The AI is gonna recognize the content of an image uh, or the software is gonna figure out, okay, this is a sunset and it's gonna make suggestions as it says here. When you open an image, it's gonna get analyzed. Uh, recommendations are gonna be provided. Those recommendations are coming in the form of a template. We're gonna talk about that in a second. For me, the key point is you still have full control over your edits. That's a question I keep getting. Hey, Jim, is this fully automated? Um, editing, like what are you gonna do, Jim? Because you make videos about this stuff. Um, they tell me I have full control and we're gonna talk about that as well. As I just said, what Luminar AI is not, it is not Luminar 5, it's an entirely new product. It's not Photo Lemur, that's an old AI-based product that Skyloom has that basically does everything for you. This is not full automation, you still have control. It's not a dumbed down version of Luminar. Um, it's not just for people that don't know how to edit, it's for creative professionals, regardless of your skill level. So if you need more assist assistance editing, the AI and the templates are gonna help you get there. If you don't, people like me that wanna dive in and use the sliders, that's available to you as well. And there were some questions around, hey, this AI is gonna do all the editing, what if I don't like the edit? You control that. It's not gonna just, it's not a one click and everything's done and take it or leave it, sorry. Oh, you don't like that, too bad. It's not like that at all. You still have control and we're gonna talk about that here when I talk about templates. So here we are, let's talk about templates. They're the next generation of looks and you're effectively gonna get four choices when you open an image. The first one is, a template will be suggested, right? This is a recommendation engine. So the template will say, oh, you've got a, a landscape with a sunset or whatever. Here's an idea for you. And if you wanna accept that, you just click it and it'll apply to the image. So you, option one is use the template as is. Option number two, there's a strength slider with the templates. Again, this is what I've been told. So you're gonna be able to go in and adjust the strength. Hey, I really like that template, it looks great, but and it's a little overdone for my taste, it's too much of whatever, take that slider back to the left, pull it down, make it 75% or 50%. Um, so operating the same way as a look did as I understand it. Third option is, hey, I like this template, it looks really good, but I wanna tweak some things, not just the strength slider, I wanna adjust the tools, maybe customize it a little bit. You can do that, you go into the edit button and click in there and adjust the template. And of course, option four is edit from scratch. This is where you have full control to start from the ground up and do whatever it is you wanna do to your photo. So templates are gonna replace looks as I understand it, but you have full control. It's basically, a, I feel like, a better version of looks with an AI-based recommendation engine to help you more quickly get to a solution for editing the photo, uh, but it doesn't mean you have to do it, and it doesn't mean it's controlling every aspect of how the photo looks. So in that spirit, I wanted to go over to the AI, the, excuse me, the Luminar AI site and take a look at this. Like you may have gone in and seen this before when I made that last video. It was before anything was public, so I didn't get a chance to see any of this. But if you look here at some of these examples and kind of what they're doing, my assumption is that some of these uh, examples, maybe many of them are gonna be based on the templates that we just talked about. They're focused on results and not the process, so they're wanting to get you to get these things done more quickly. Now here's something I wanted to do. This is something I had not seen before, but I wanna zoom in here on their website and take a look at this. Um, as I said before in that previous video, these four uh, tabs, if you wanna call them that, across the top, um, I think that's a suggested workflow. The first one is catalog. Okay, go find an image to edit. Second one is template. Okay, here's a suggested edit for that photo that you've decided upon. Edit. I wanna go customize either the template or I wanna edit from scratch and then publish. And again, I think there's gonna be more coming around publish. I don't know anything about it in terms of print module and exporting and what services it may connect to. I don't know, but this is a suggested workflow from left to right, but that doesn't mean you have to follow it. You could go to catalog and then go straight to edit. So um, you can do bounce around just like you can on any tab. Here's the other cool thing about this graphic is you'll see here Sky AI, that's the Sky replacement tool, appears to be renamed. Um, when you go grab a pack, it looks like it's giving previews of what all the skies look like. That's huge. And you've still got advanced settings, which I imagine are similar uh, to the advanced settings that exist in Sky replacement today. Down below, you've got some additional things. Atmosphere AI sounds really cool. And you've got a template, and you can see here, this appears to be a strength slider for a template. So 
you can adjust that to reduce the intensity or increase if you need to the intensity of that template as it's applied to your photo if you use a template you can see here you can reset it you can also make custom adjustments, save it as your own template, and it looks like you've got a favorite tab or a favorite of uh, this little heart icon. So you can favorite it, and I'm guessing you'll have a folder maybe of templates that are faved. Now, having said all that, I haven't seen the UI, and I've been told the UI is not locked. So keep in mind, even though this is on their website and we're kind of trying to dive into it, doesn't mean it's officially going to look like this. Um, I still see the four tabs there. I'm not really sure what these are. I've got a couple of guesses, but I don't want to get into that until I learn a little bit more about it. Um, the other cool thing is they've got examples of some of these. Body AI, where you can shrink or expand the look of a person. Skin AI, I think we're familiar with. Iris AI, we already talked about. Accent AI has been around for a while. It's fantastic. Face AI is going to be good stuff. Bokeh AI, that wasn't really announced. I think it was mentioned in the press release, but you can basically get, um, you know, uh, I'll call it bokeh or blur effect. So here's uh, some examples. I think that looks pretty awesome. And here you can see here the slimming, the body slimming occurring. Um, here's the bokeh effect in action, right? So clearer view down that road and now a little bit less, you know, more obscured because they've kind of basically created um, bokeh in the photo. And this one, I think the eyes look fantastic. They're crisp and sharp and not to mention uh, the color uh, is either enhanced uh, and brightened, maybe changed, I can't tell. There are some cool things happening here and I'm pretty excited about what these tools are going to do for us in terms of workflow. Now scrolling on, talking about landscapes, atmosphere AI, that sounds really cool. Fog, mist, haze, steam, drizzle. Um, it sounds pretty amazing. I'm very intrigued by atmosphere AI because there's nothing I like more than re really creating dramatic, interesting, kind of moody photos. Color harmony, I don't really know what that means, but you can kind of see what it says here. It's more control over color. So again, haven't seen an implementation of that. I don't really know. Um, super contrast, I don't know. Look at that, I mean, that looks cool, right? So before and after. Um, it's more depth to a photo based on the contrast. So I don't know if this is some version of advanced contrast, um, and it's AI generated, I don't know, but we'll find out. And then mood, I'm really intrigued by this. Mood tool, like that looks really cool. Even the base photo is amazing. Um, I really like the finished photo as well. So again, more stuff coming. This is what's available on the public website. Um, composition AI, I mean, it looks like it's gonna help you with cropping and, comp and straightening kind of decisions, which I think is gonna be really cool. Okay, I had a few comments about licensing and people saying, well, but Every year they come out with a new product. It's a subscription model. Um, it's not a subscription model. I want to talk about the differences there because I think that they're key. There's some pros and cons to both subscription and perpetual. Subscription is you pay a monthly fee and you get access to the software where you basically rent it. Perpetual is where you pay one price up front and you own the software for as long as it will still be compatible with your operating system and um, computer specs. So subscription pros, monthly payment covers your software and support. You tend to get new features and updates that are included. This is the Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop bundle right there. It's $10 a month, that's $120 a year. I pay that, I like it. I'm a fan of subscription uh, licensing, to be honest. I don't think that there's anything wrong with it, but there are some cons to it. Um, you essentially rent the software, so if you stop paying, it's basically not available to you anymore because you're kind of renting the software. Now, it functions like a utility when you have a subscription offering. Um, the perpetual pros, you pay for it once and you own it, so as long as your computer specs will continue to support it, you can use it forever. Um, you get performance and compatibility updates for free for a time. Um, at some point, a company that makes, a perpet makes and sells a perpetual product like Luminar is gonna say, okay, I've gotta stop supporting that. You see operating system companies do this, Microsoft, you know, whomever, where they say, I cannot support these older versions anymore. They're just too old, sorry, right? That happens in software. And the, the cons of Perpetual are that new versions come out usually about once a year. It's very common practice in the software industry to come out, if you're a Perpetual software publisher, to come out with a new version about once a year. That's a paid upgrade, it's not an update, it's an upgrade. New features, new compatibilities, new stuff, and they charge for that, it's a new product. They're a business, and because they're not on subscription, where you're paying them every month, then you pay them roughly once a year. Now, if you're an existing owner of Luminar, you can get Luminar AI for $59. 
So let's call it 60 bucks. The Adobe thing is $120 a year. Um, I can name several companies that have new products that come out roughly once a year, and they offer discount to current users or a regular price for new users. It's really pretty much the same thing. So I just wanted to talk about that. Skyloom is not on a subscription model with Luminar 4 or Luminar AI, but they do have a roughly annual upgrade path where they come out with a new version and they are a business. They have to continue bringing in revenue because that allows them to invest in support and development of new products and new features, which I think we all want as photo editing folks. So Luminar 4 will continue to get compatibility and performance updates um, for a roughly a year from the point of Luminar AI being launched. So if you had purchased Luminar 4 at launch, which is let's say it's roughly a year ago, and you use it for uh, up until a year after, Luminar AI is launched, you basically have a two year window for paying essentially one price to get a uh, full use of the software. Again, assuming OS and you know system compatibility. To be clear, I've got Luminar Neptune, which is a 2018 version, and it still runs. Um, I can open it up, edit a photo. I've got Luminar Flex still running, which is like a 2019 or late 2018, I can't remember when it came out. But I've got Luminar Flex, it was a part of, it was a spinoff, for lack of a better word, of Luminar 3. I've got that still running, and sometimes I open it up and just play around. So those products are, may not be supported by Skyloom anymore. They're definitely not getting new features, but they still work. And part of that is because my OS is kind of old. I'm about to update that. So uh, the point is, you can use Luminar 4, Luminar 3, Luminar Flex, Luminar 2018, as long as your system supports it. It's not a forced upgrade. I just wanted to cover that because I get a lot of questions about that. So my opinion is move to Luminar AI because I think it's going to be better. I think it's going to be faster. It's going to have cool new stuff that you're not, not going to get elsewhere. But I'm that kind of person when it comes to editing tools. I want the latest and greatest. Your, uh, your opinion may vary. Totally cool. Um, and you know everybody has to make a decision that's based on their own circumstances. So that's really it, my friends. I wanted to do this kind of Q&A, try to answer and address some of the questions I'm getting. I'm sorry, again, it's a little bit of a long video. I'm trying to uh, make additional Luminar 4 tutorials. I'll keep doing that. And of course, when I get Luminar AI, you're gonna see a bunch of stuff around it. If you have questions, please put them down below as I learn more about Luminar AI. I will be doing more videos and sharing as much as I can. I want you guys to be as fully informed as possible. And if you did pre-order, please get in the Luminar Insiders community and we'll learn about stuff together there. And that's it for today, my friends. Thank you so much for the interaction. And um, I really appreciate it. Good, bad, or indifferent, whatever your opinions are of Luminar AI. I appreciate the community and the, uh, the conversations that we have here. So take care of yourselves, my friend. I'll see you really soon and uh, adios.